It's part three of our conversation with the great Ian Anderson. It's also the third time we talk to him. I'm John Bowden from Rocky Stream Music. Silent Singing is a brand new book. There are many different versions of it, of all the lyrics from every Jethro Tull song, as well as Ian Anderson's solo stuff, and lots of rare pictures in there. A few different versions of the book where you can pick it up. Links in the description of this video. Also, 40th anniversary of A, I love this album. Beautiful package. But the 50th anniversary of Aqualon. We talked to Ian Anderson about all things Jethro Tull. Considering the things you were writing about, like you said, you were in your 20s there, a lot of the subject matter on Aqualon are still, you know, still talked about today and they're very important today. Like him 43, you know, doing things in the name of God, sometimes very unsavory things, you know, which happens a lot. So I see it everywhere. Well, it, but it, it, it does. But I, I should I should um, make it fairly clear that I'm a, a big supporter in, a very, in quite a hands-on way, I'm a big supporter of the Christian Church, both the both the flavour that I uh, am more familiar with, which is essentially the Protestant Church, and perhaps leaning more towards, apart from apart from the the Church of England, probably the Lutheran Church in Europe, which is the uh, simpler, clearer, it's the Apple Mac of religion in the sense that it is design minimalist. Right. But I think that the, the spiritual message is then it is freer to to be experienced unadorned by the, the glitz and the finery of, of Catholicism at its extremes in, for instance, St. Peter's in, in Rome. Um, but I'm still a, a supporter of, of the church, and it's just that I take some things uh, with a, not exactly a pinch of salt, but with a, a sense of having to translate them and put them into the context of today, because there's a lot of scary, frightening stuff in the good book, both in the, well, more so in the first um in the, uh, I suppose the, the the traditions of early church and the teachings which form Judaism are quite, I mean, very patriarchal, <clears throat> filled with a lot of vengeance and uh, jealousies and primal human conditions. And when we get into the New Testament, things get a little bit more caught up in the in the more gentle narrative. Mm -hmm. of Jesus of Nazareth and of course it has a scary ending but it's an ending for a reason I think that's perhaps the way that when you add the Old and New Testament together you, you get a you get a very big picture some of which you you really do have to try to set aside the literal translations of the biblical scholars who who wrote all that stuff over a period of many years in of course language is very different to our own so when the king james bible came along it, it was an interpretation it's uh, lots of things in it have been questioned as to being essentially mistranslations but it is what it is and it it, it is that huge substance that forms the basis of of teaching and a foundation for people to live their lives in the context of something spiritual. Now, you know, I'm a big supporter of that, but you know, you couldn't call me a Christian with a capital C because I'm, I'm a believer in Jesus of Nazareth and his historical position as a, a rather um, <clears throat> a rebellious Jewish teacher, which is really what he was. I can't, I can't, I can't help but, but overall feel that there is more, a great deal more good than bad in the way the Bible ultimately is presented in the English language in today's world. I still think we're better off for it. It's just that I, well, I, I, I talk about this in, in the silent singing book because there are uh, the, the lyrics to the album I'm currently completing, which is um, very much about the subject of extremism in, uh, in various walks of life, but it takes as its little bit of a starting point, a little bit of a, um, 
uh, a nudge in a direction from various passages in the Bible. And so it should be seen for what it is. It's, it is simply, it is not in, inspired by in any lofty terms. It's just, mm-hmm. it's just having a little bit of a, you know, it's in the same way as you might step out of your house and <clears throat> walk through a garden and see a bird on a wall and hours, days, weeks later it might cause you to write a song about it. Yeah. But, um, you know, I, I, I'm, I'm moved by lots of things. Sometimes they sit lurking in the back of my mind for a long period of time before they come to reality. Sometimes it's something you act upon almost immediately and get an idea, write the song, record it the same day, which I've done on many occasions. Yeah. yeah. But yes, a lot of stuff in that in that album, in, in the Aquaman album, that I, I think is contentious, and it's it uh, did cause a certain amount of furore in the Bible Belt states of the USA, where people burned copies of the album back in 1971, and um, uh, you know, luckily. When they came to the concerts, they left their guns at home. So uh, I, I, I have had, well, you know, a couple of serious attempts and quite a few threats on my life over the years. But, um, you know, the reasons behind it, I don't think were actually because of somebody getting their knickers in a twist because I'd written something they didn't disagree with on the topics of religion. I think it was m- more people who were had that strange, weird infatuation um, with somebody and it becomes very unhealthy. It becomes something, I suppose, rather like what happened to poor John Lennon. You know, someone just becomes obsessed with a person and in their own minds there is no room for you and that person to coexist because you want to become that person. And by killing that person, you sort of take over the reality of that person's life. And I, I, I think there's a very weird phenomenon out there where obsessions with public figures just can take you down that road where ultimately one of you is either got to, <laughs> one of you got to go, whether it's going to be locked up in prison for the rest of their lives or whether it's um, um, successfully uh, removing um, the object of your infatuation. But uh, it's, it's scary stuff. Mm-hmm. Links to all the new products for Jethro Tull, including Silent Singing, the new book. There are many versions of it. The new 40th anniversary of the A album, Beautiful. And 50th anniversary of Aqualon. Make sure you comment on our videos, subscribe to our channel, and share our videos. More from Ian Anderson in the next three, four days. I'm John Bowden from Rocky Stream Music.